that kind of nerd. Let's start the show with comics, movies, and technology. Here we go, bringing you the segments that you're looking for, like Cape Talk screen to stream, tech perspective, and more. Cast this nerd degree and the blockbuster. Welcome to the club, cause you're that kind of Welcome, everyone, to That Kind of Nerds Podcast, a show that tells you what is going on in the nerdy world. I am CJ Mellon, joined by the two wonderful people that do this show with me, Josh Burns and Brian Thornton. What up? Are we talking about Space Jam? (laughs) We are not. Because I watched it. We are not. And it it was was something. No, we're, we're we're talking about way better content. We are talking about the Disney Plus original series, Loki. Oh, so almost the same thing. <laughs> Is Did there you really see Space Jam? I have not seen Space Jam. There, there was multiple versions of LeBron. There was animated LeBron. There was Mad Max LeBron. There was NBA All Star LeBron. Was Sounds there good terrible. acting LeBron? No. There was there oh, was okay. mediocre, typical NBA acting, better than Michael Jordan, but still not good acting of LeBron. Can I just say one thing about Space Jam and then we're going to move on to Loki? Because I mean, why not? We're already, gentlemen. Can we we're stop you from it. saying something about Space yeah. Jam? No, I think this is I think this needs to be said. OK, because you two fine gentlemen are not going to see Space Jam, a new legacy. So I feel like I can say this. to you. I will way later down the road. You're correct. So the first 15 minutes of the Space Jam, right? The, 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 it's just a whole like like mechanism to get LeBron into the server verse that you saw in the preview, right? Right. And so you do, it, you do it. So the Warner Brothers like execs like pitch him this idea of this thing called Warner Three Thousand. I don't know what it is, but the HBO pitch Max. video they show him it, it's it's a giant commercial for HBO Max. But the pitch that they show him is, hey LeBron, we know you're 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 busy. So we're gonna digitally like enhance you and put you in this system. And then how cool would it be if you could be in Batman or how cool would it be if you could be uh high five in King Kong? And then <clears throat> at the end of the pitch video, LeBron goes, listen, guys, I, I'm, I'm a basketball player. I am not an actor. People who in my position who try acting and never goes well for them. Plus this idea is stupid. And then they proceed to have the rest of the movie where LeBron goes into like other worlds like Batman and King Kong and Game of Thrones. They they like it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that it's a stupid concept and they they continued with the concept of the movie that they already said was stupid. It hurt my brain. It was very very terrible. That's all I have to say. I I think that uh, also serves as our entire review of a uh, Space Jam. The re- Glad I watched it, but yeah, it's terrible. But you did it. All right, let's no jump. Ki- all right, end the recording. Five minute episode. <laughs> Next episode. Five minute clip. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 <clears throat> all right. Uh, I would love to get some first impressions from watching this this mini series, which turned out to be just season one of of this show. Uh, I will first turn uh, to Mister uh, Mister Burns. Uh, first impressions of watching Loki. Uh, it was a better story than I expected. Um, overall, a lot of fun, a couple twists and turns in there. And, um, I liked that there wasn't, at least I didn't perceive maybe because I just don't go on social media ever. There, there wasn't a ton of like fan theory. Um, at least not that I, like, like I said, not that I perceived overall, it was better than I thought, um, WandaVision and, and, uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier. Right. Uh, I, I first want to start by saying, um, I was right, and this is the only show that got a second season. Roll the clip where I said this is the only concept that could work for a second season. Okay, now that we're all on the same page. I gotta find that clip. Good luck. Now that we're all on the same page. Uh, I, I loved it. I thought it was great. Josh, there there was a ton of fan theory. Uh, I, I mean, you, you're just probably not on the, the right for you page in TikTok or something. Uh, but it wasn't like... I think everybody learned their lesson from WandaVision. People weren't obsessive about it. Um, So that was cool. That was cool to see. There's way more fan theory about how WandaVision plays into this, which is whatever. Um, I I wouldn't say it's better. I actually, I prefer WandaVision out of the three. I thought it was a lot of fun. Really cool story. Love Tom Hiddleston. 
Uh, really, really like Owen Wilson in this in this show. Thought he was great. Wow. Um, and you know, I'm I'm interested in how Kang works within the greater picture of the of the MCU. Um, but yeah, strong showing. Really happy, and uh, for all time. Yeah, I I re- I like this this series a lot. Uh, I thought mm. that again, just having six episodes to to go and tell a story uh we can see that sometimes being a, a pitfall of fan theories but also just kind of being distracted just waiting for what could the next episode be and not always being satisfied at the end of one episode that you got a story out of it and you got character progression or you got something where some of the stakes got raised and i think this this show did a very good job of that i was not as gun ho on the the season finale as as other people were uh, but other than that, uh, I, I really enjoyed watching the show. Tom Hiddleston was uh, a lot of fun to watch, but every person that came into this episode, uh, into the series, including just like you said, Owen, Owen Wilson, I, I a, didn't think I ever would uh, think to myself, what does Owen Wilson look like on a jet ski? Uh, but also just like, oh, he's I bet a, you he's happy. Right. I, uh, everyone is happy on a jet ski. It was nice to see him as a very competent actor and in a way that he can do that. There was a. Uh, a, a clip where uh, he was talking about how he met Tom for the first time and uh, he was just asking, hey, what if you worked on? And he mentioned that uh, Tom Hiddleston had played Hamlet uh, once before and met, and met Kenneth Branagh and just, you know, he had a connection to the MCU. And then he turned to Owen Wilson. He goes, have you ever played Hamlet? And he's like, that was the first time anybody ever asked me if I had paid, paid, played Hamlet before. Uh, so mm-hmm. it was really nice to see that they had chemistry on and off the set and it really translated uh, on on screen, so uh, overall, I, I really enjoyed the ride that we got with the show, and was really shocked uh, to see that this was not a series finale, but this was indeed just a season finale. So I'm excited for the the next thing that comes down. Now, you said you didn't like the the finale. I, I enjoyed the finale. I thought it was, you know, I, I'm I'm very much over the idea of these finales need to be these huge like action spectacular type things, like. I thought this did a really good job and it had huge ramifications on the future of the show. And and it didn't have to be this huge action set piece, you know, like yeah. we got that in the, in the previous episode with um, the Loki variants and, and uh, the, the giant uh, Isildur, I believe the monster. Um, Elias. I, th- I thought it was good. What is it? Elias. Elias. Thank you. Don't ask me. Isildur is probably from like World of War. <laughs> It's, um, it, no, it's it's from it's from Lord of the Rings. Oh, that's it. Oh, wow. All right. I'm getting yeah. all my fantasy shit mixed yeah, up. You just put them all together. But I, I enjoyed it. And I also enjoyed the fact that we got Kang. But we didn't get Kang. Correct. Yes. We got a version of Kang and Kang the Conqueror either going to be in the movies or going to be in season two, What whatever that looks like. I I thought it's set up. I think this is the show that completely sets up what the future of the MCU is going to be. Right. And you don't get that without that final episode. So yeah. I really enjoyed that. I, I it reminded me and I'm not the only person who who thought this. And I, I think I stole off the, the guy who does like the pitch meetings. I forget his name. He's a very Brian George. Yes, that guy where uh, sure. he said uh, it reminded it reminded me of the scene in I believe it's Matrix 2 where you meet the architect. And you yeah. have to stop character development and character resolution to a lot that's going on real quick to a explain who this person is. You have to explain this, the guy, he who remains thing and, and the multiverse and the, and you have to explain all this stuff before then you can jump into the rest of the character development. And then of course the betrayal kiss was like cliche number two, uh, where it was like, okay, yeah, they're, they're going to kiss and she's going to kick him into, Oh yeah, look at it. She betrayed him. Oh no. So, it was still a good series finale. You look at series finales for other shows that are trying to set up something complex. They don't do well. Uh, this did so good. I just think because it raised the stakes the, at the entire season, uh, it was just such a halt to to the momentum that those two were making and seeing the progress that Sylvie and, and, and he were making as they went on their journey. And it felt like a slight regression and just kind of a stop of that character development. But other than that, like, I like the fact that we set up a lot, right? Right, Brian? Like, we set up a lot going into this, we, and that's super exciting as a nerd. We did. I'm going to argue with you for a second. Sorry, Josh. Yeah, please. You, you, you can talk in a moment, I promise. Um, 
I don't think it's the same. I, I and your pitch pitch meaning is very funny. He's he's a funny dude and he's a satire, right? But it, it it is it is those characters' story arcs at that point where they meet Kang are done. No, like, this is this is the tipping point. This is the no, moment n- that defines no, all. No, moments. it's not for Loki. The tipping point was an episode or two ago. And and Sylvie the previous Fishing, episode, him, right. him holding her hand and unlocking that power. That was right. the point. Yeah. Sylvie's story is always going to end the same. And I think your problem with this is that you, ex- you didn't know this was going to be season one. You thought this was one and done. And like, otherwise, like you, yeah, you yeah. can't complete those people's character arcs and story developments and then still have a season two. So, Sure, the the betrayal kiss. I, I'll give you a little cliche, but that's because this the, the, her character development's not done. Her character development hasn't halted. In fact, she has. She made a giant mistake at the end of this episode, and now she has to deal with the ramifications of that. Whereas Loki is the complete opposite end. His character development is is done for all for for my like in in this what we set up in this season is done because he went from. I have this glorious purpose to now I don't have a purpose. I'm just a a, a, a hamster on a wheel. I'm just a, a wrench in the in the cogs of time to maybe we need to keep things status quo because he has the ability to rule over the entire multiverse. And the reason he he wants to take over the TVA is not because, oh, I have this glorious purpose. It's because it could be the right thing to do. Right. His character progression, for the most part, is done. Now he's got to deal with, oh, I'm a man out of time, like syndrome, because he's in a different timeline and he doesn't know where he is. Right? Sylvie's progression has is not done. She reverts ex- immediately back to where she was at the beginning of this, and that's not a, a halt of character progression. That is what she was meant to do this entire time. That's what she's been striving for. She's completed her purpose, and now she's got to deal with the fallout of that. So. I completely disagree. I don't think it's a halt of character development. I think it's just the natural conclusion for these two characters. And now we have to deal with the fallout. Yeah, and and, and you, I think you got a good call out of this, the sense of you're, when you're watching that show and you don't know that there is a second season coming, uh, it is jarring to see how that's how it ended. Because it was mid-credits right. Right, that they announced that this was uh, another season. Uh, so that, that's a good call out just saying that. But I mean, that's also how Disney set it up. So it, they get to enjoy my feelings on that. Uh, I I think Disney does not give a shit about your oh, feelings. Oh no, they do not at all. Not that or Scarlett Johansson's. Uh, they, I was just about to say that. <laughs> they uh, what what I meant though with halting the character progression was not so much the very end, but it was the fact that we had to stop th- with these two characters to introduce Kang, which is fine. Uh, it, it was just something I was like, all right, like I'm 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 here for those two. I'm glad this guy's here, and I know you got to set up Doctor Strange in 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 a few years, and you got to set up. In what four months we have a Spider-Man movie? Like I know you got to set this up, but uh, get on with it, please. Josh, what did you what did you think about the the finale in general? I thought it was good. Like I didn't I didn't dig too deep into it. It seemed to me like Loki got sent to a different uh, <clears throat> a different universe. Uh, I like that. You know, he knows that his um, you you said he has no purpose, and I don't. I don't think that's the case, Um, but he knows that his sort of destiny never manifests, right? And that he ends up dead at the hands of Thanos. And so the only thing he can do now um, is explore uh, essentially all these timelines or, you know, what will eventually be the multiverse um, and, uh, you know, be a disruptor more or less, which is which is, you know, kind of what he did anyway. Um, but without like an ultimate goal of, of ruling or, um, you know, glorifying himself or, or whatever. Um, and I think that's kind of cool. I, I didn't, um, I wasn't expecting them to go too deep into the Kang thing. And, and, um, like, I liked that we got the introduction and I I like that you saw the statue of Kang at the end and then you're like, oh, he's clearly not at the same TVA. This is a different spot. Um, there is a lot of setup. There's a lot to assume. Um, and I, I like, I've just enjoyed watching each of these shows unfold. Um, so I'm not really even 
<clears throat> like kind of low expectations for for um how quickly anything unfolds or how quickly they tie in anything that we we see or think that we know and clearly don't um yeah man i, I was really happy with the with the finale i didn't have any issue with any of it yeah and and i think to your point too i i think as odd as this is going to sound i think loki's purpose right now is to try to get things back together but again not not to the sense of then he can be in charge or that he can rule and that it's self-serving of more of just of hey i i I see that what's going on is not bueno we need to we need to bring this back to a controlled sense and he went from in the beginning whatever means to make me rule chaos and hell and killing and murder and death to i gotta probably put time back together like yeah he's not i mean it's very clear that he's no longer um that he's no longer looking for like a win, right? I think, you know, he, and that was um, in um, the episode in the void, right? Where he's basically like, look, d- does Thanos kill you guys too? Right. Cause he knows he's, he's cooked as far as like the world, uh, the universe, the timeline as he knows it. Um, and I think that the sort of the, the epiphany that he has is that everything that he thought was powerful or that he would need to get or acquire to gain power is kind of meaningless in, in the grand scheme. Um, and not that, not that he is meaningless or that his life is meaningless, but that the, the goals that he had set and the purpose that he had thought was his, uh, his right was, you know, a, a flawed, perception completely meaningless in the grand scheme of things and that like that was kind of yeah. cool to watch to watch loki um get humble um on his own terms and have a few realizations and then uh, obviously like you know the, you've got this incredibly um humanized version of of the the god of mischief and and, but that's a common theme right with all the shows so far like there's been this very human element um and this lived up to that theme i thought it was so cool i really did and i like the fact you bring up too uh he asked the one the one uh loki variant said no i i killed thanos like i held the infinity gauntlet and yet still ended up where he was at still ended up alone i killed thor right the, what the yeah what did thor. you do what like what did you do to be in charge what was your nexus event he's like i killed thor and, and loki's like oh shit well yeah uh the, the uh i i killed thanos i held the infinity gauntlet i i killed thor the the one loki was the fucking president like he you can see the fact that no matter what even if he had everything that he thought he wanted it was always set up to to fail Right. And I think the fact that he not only embraces that, but I think to your point, he goes, OK, then I then then my goal is wrong. Like this whole goal is completely incorrect. I I can't think about it this way anymore. Uh, I think really speaks volume. So, yeah, it's a, it's a great well, call out. And, and, and kind of the combination of your 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 two analyses, right, is that, <laughs> you know, L- Loki coming to terms with the fact that not that he's like insignificant, but that his story is done, right? No matter yeah. what he does, he's going to die at the hands of Thanos. And your assessment of, hey, I got to go fix time. That's that's really like the makings of, of, of not just a season two, but multiple shows you can have in the future. There, There's a, a comic book storyline of Booster Gold. Where the tagline is uh, God, the he greatest was such hero. A shit show. <laughs> you know what? Read the story and then come back to me. Uh, the tagline is, you know, he's the greatest hero hero that no one no one remembers or something like that. Because the whole concept of, of what he started doing, is, especially in this, is that he was going around fixing. We'll just call them anachronisms in time, right? Uh, Loki would call them nexus events, and and correcting things from going too far astray and because he's going in and out of time and and effectively repairing and erasing timelines that should not be around no one knows about him but he is he is the guy who is protecting the entire timeline the entire universe and no one knows and 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 it was the same concept behind um uh what's the actual name edge of tomorrow live die repeat oh right yeah right the fact that no one knows Tom, Tom Cruise is fixing Tom everything. Cruise in that movie keeps going back, going back. He starts off as this very self-grandizing. Oh, it's all about me. 
and through his experience he he learns that it's not all about me i'm kind of insignificant in this equation he saves the entire world and because it, it completely resets the timeline no one remembers who you know that what this guy did to save the world that's what this is coming into this that's what loki is going to be which is interesting i love that take of a character who yeah his he's always been it's about me oh i'm not good enough i i need to be better i need to rule i need to be king of asgard because i have a glorious purpose and now he's going to be the guy who is going to go fixing shit that went wrong in the timeline because of something that he did frankly he he got sylvie there I- and he's going to be fixing it but no one's going to know no one's going to know about this guy. And and the timeline for the, the, the sacred timeline that we're watching in the MCU movies, he's dead. Yep. And he's got to live with that. Like, I think that's a very interesting concept. And I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. When you, you just said the exact same thing I said. Why'd you say <laughs> the same thing I said? I didn't say not, I added to it. You didn't. What, I, I, what I gave it colorful language. <laughs> you didn't. What I like about this show, too, and when we were talking about this and speculating what is this show going to be, we kind of made the joke that this is the MCU's Doctor Who, right? Uh, and I like the fact that they didn't take the bait for that when we were watching it for, for this season. Go to several Nexus events. People are dying. There's that city with the rocket ship and, and you know no one gets out. They're on the train and like, oh, wow, all those people are going to die back there. Okay, get on the train. Like, they, they didn't take that time to be like well now these characters are just implicitly good forever and they will save everybody right they they took the time to just say yeah they're still loki's like they're still gonna move through this the way that they would uh and, and that they didn't just turn this into an mcu doctor who uh and i like your idea of kind of moving forward both of you uh of this this man without a time and just kind of fixing things to see if he can put it together it's quantum leap without jumping into another person very excited for that part oh boy <laughs> yeah but quantum leap was across one timeline right hey this yeah would be across multiple well, yeah and, and there was the devil and some weird stuff and what excites weird. me is how what if now can play into the the larger story right like now we have all these timelines well guess what we just happen to have a show that just happens to explore alternate timelines called what if that premieres in like three weeks right, right. yeah where <laughs> Where, listen, I'm not saying we're going to see the, the Marvel Zombies timeline in, like, a Loki show, but it's it's an option, right? And, like, it's like, hey, we saw the hundreds of thousands of timelines that were coming out of it. This is a cool show that kind of can explore some of those things that we're not going to explore in the major movies. Like, again, like, this show, like, sets up all of Phase 4. And if I recall correctly... Wasn't this show supposed yes. to drop first? If you look at the Disney timeline of how to watch things, Loki is before WandaVision and uh, Captain Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Captain Falcon. It was supposed to be Black Widow, <laughs> then Jesus this. Christ. Falcon Bonds! I'm sorry. <laughs> Captain Falcon. <laughs> Captain America and the Winter show Soldier. Show me your moves. <laughs> yes, it was supposed to come out first. Uh, it, it was the, the one thing that I'm curious about, and, and I, I, Josh, I know you said, so it sounds like you didn't browse too much of tiktok or nerd what internets to find fan theories and stuff for the nope. show and nope. good on you uh i i uh, avoiding that you just come out a happier person uh, so so keep keep doing that the thing i don't like but it's kind of set up and it's kind of made to set up is now everyone throwing out all these different oh i'd like to see a variant of this and that and oh the frog thor oh, what if that gets out and we see frog thor and then and we just see variants all over the already place in there uh yeah he was in the jar right he, he, was jumping. he was in. He was in that episode, yeah, right? Jumping. But now, but now they're like, well, what are we going to see variants in the MCU? Like, is is the fact that uh, Natalie Portman is going to be a female? Is that a variant? I'm just like, okay, can this be isolated to this one thing, please? Don't it, make it, every fan theory like that. Just seems weird. Or the fact that Chris Evans was the Human Torch and now he's Captain America, and they're like, ah, oh, it's a variant timeline. Like, I really don't want this stuff. It, 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 but, but it does listen. It does open up for that, but more importantly, I, I, I forget Daredevil. about the past. Like, hold I'm on, looking, this opens up Daredevil. Come on, I'm sorry, never mind. What, what I'm talking, what, what I mean, technically it does, but what I'm, I'm, and and technically it doesn't because Netflix stuff did take. I place thought Charlie the, Cox the, was already MCU. signed up for something. Charlie Cox was was in and has done reshoots for the third Spider Man. By the way, anyway, yeah. Um, but what this does set up moving forward is Marvel has an out to fix any story plot holes that they may have. <laughs> no, I, no, you're you right. Laugh, 
You no, laugh, you're... but that's exactly what this is, you're right? Exactly right. This is a so retcon like, 101 ability. This, right here. this is a really great way to retcon a couple things, fix, tidy up a couple things. This is also a good way to bring in the Fantastic Four, to bring in the X Men. Whether or not it is the the Fox versions, I don't give a shit. I hope it's not the Fox versions. Um, but like, hey, new versions, right? Are it, or this is a way, and we'll probably talk more about this when we talk about Black Widow. But this is a way to say, hey, we killed Black Widow. Do we want her back? Sure. Let's bring in a variant. Does it have to be Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> not nope. unless they give her, her her box office no, money. No, I think I think even after the <laughs> statement they put about Scarlett Johansson, which will I, she's suing Disney. For those of you who don't know, yeah, uh, I, I think Scarlett ScarJo is done with Disney forever. I think I think they're I think they're done. Well, we'll talk more about that. But the but the fact of the matter is, we've established that variants don't necessarily look like the same actor or Correct. get played by the same actor. So hey, we can cast. Whoever the hell we want. If we want to bring someone back from the dead or we want to bring them in from an alternate timeline. And, you know, and it plays it plays fair. This is this is a good way to do that. Like fucking um Gamora is technically a variant right now. Yeah. And you what you so, brought up another part too, again with the release schedule. Had this come out first, when you watch WandaVision and you see uh Quicksilver and it's the Fox one, you're like, oh, variants, variants, right? You you, you would probably go a little a little crazier so uh yeah i'm excited to see what they can do and how they can wreck on but yeah that's my point right we can bring back that quicksilver we can bring it in and make have it make sense uh okay i i do you <laughs> alligator loki is he is he the uh, baby yoda of the mcu what kind of really have you seen, have oh, you dude. seen the crocs i have seen the crocs i've also seen the alligator loki hi alligator loki i've i have no idea what's happening right now so All good right. that alligator loki is adorable and i want more of that shit by the way did he come from a universe where they are all alligators or was he turned into an alligator what is the no, deal they're, they're all they're all um you're asking all too pets. many questions There's, there is such a thing as the pet avengers that's why there's frog thor there's also oh uh, who else is on the pet avengers? i really i don't i don't really need to know i'm just oh you're 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 about oh, to, I'm find about to know anyway okay you're about to find out. All right. Uh, I mean, Lockjaw from the Inhumans, Lockheed from X Men, Zabu from the Savage Land, Red Wing, the the bird Red Wing. Um, there's a T Rex, Captain America. Technically, Howard the Duck has something to do with it. All right. I don't know. It's been a while since I read a Pet it's Avenger a story. I hate you. I know you do. Uh, anything anyone else wants to just add in general about about Loki? Nope. Uh, did we talk about Sylvie? Yeah, I, no, we I didn't talk her. much about Sylvie. No, I loved her, and I want to see more of her. I would love to see her show up in Thor four. Thor four. Say that <clears throat> ten times fast. But love and Thor, thunder. Thor, you Thor, can Thor, say Thor, the name Thor, of the movie. Thor, Thor, Thor. Um, it's technically the third, Thor, the fourth Thor. So I am technically saying it's the name called Love and Thunder. Just yeah. that's why I said say the name. It's a lot easier. That man. Well, now I refuse yeah, but, to say the name. But uh, not only not only would that be awesome, I'm kind of expecting that now. Like she did such a great job in this in this role and did such a great performance that like if you don't see her in the MCU, I feel like we're we're getting robbed out of some really fun moments that we could be having with a lot of characters. Yeah, well, and I, I mean, eventually they're going to dub her Enchantress and then we're all going to, you know, move on with our lives. But I, I think. I, I'm not joking. No, 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 because she can enchant. Uh, she can enchant and, you know, her, Enchantress in the comic book's name is Sylvie. I thought she was great. I thought it was. I thought it was really cool to to see. I love. I love the scene where almost is like you fell in love with yourself. That's the most narcissistic thing I've ever seen. Um, she's fine. She's she's just kind of, you know, stuck in uh, angry child mode, and um, she's not at the same point that 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 Loki is as far as right. like the realization, right? So. Um, that's going to take some doing. And, um, even if, even if she does end up somewhere in the MCU, you know, it's not going to be Sylvie, right? It's not going to be the, the dynamic with Tom Hiddleston. It'll be something else. Yeah. And I mean, to be fair to, to Loki, right? Uh, while we like Loki, he was always still kind of a douche and he didn't actually get a real heart until Ragnarok. Or he I disagree actually showed that he was Thor. a douche. I like, I, I, Maybe I, douche always, is hard. I always, yeah, it is harsh. Um, I always thought he was entertaining. Um, yes. So I don't know. Dude but he didn't have, he wasn't that, his actions were always 
serving himself and they were always about taking the shortcuts the easy way out just kind of being being a little bit of of just kind of that thought the narcissistic yeah. one right yeah and he didn't actually become non-narcissistic until ragnarok where he actually showed up for thor because you know there was that one moment where he's throwing the rocks and you know it's just i wish you were here brother and then at finally at the end of the movie when they're they're on the ship and he throws the 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 the, the lid to the 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 Fucking help me out here. Why is my brain going? The can't I don't I don't know. He's actually there and he catches it and they had that moment, which they show in the Loki show that it took how many movies for this guy to actually become oh, oh, he actually has a heart. His heart grew three sizes. So I'm okay with doing that again with Sylvie. I'm okay. Let's with do get help. I hate get help. It's <laughs> well, embarrassing. Get help. <laughs> so we're doing get help. <laughs> well, yeah, and and I, I love how that first episode of Loki where we get to pretty much watch the clip show of Loki's life. Um, but it's, it's also like a giant therapy session for him Yeah, because we, we have to take this Loki who we technically plucked at the end of Avengers where he was a douche. Sorry, Josh, I disagree with you. He was a douche. Um, he did just like kill half of New York. So or like then, a quarter of Manhattan. So, yeah. And then, um, we have to get him to the point where he's at it in, in Thor Ragnarok. So, I mean, I, I thought it was a, a really nice way of doing it. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't think we need to rehash the same stuff with Sylvie. I think Sylvie's going to very quickly realize her mistake when she has to deal with a very difficult to deal with Kang. Um, I, I just, I think I would like to see her interact with Thor and Jane and, you know, that, that crew. I think she's smarter than our version of loki yes. and i and i'd like to see how that plays out whether she decides to, to be a little bit villainous and just dis- duplicitous i think it'd be fun i i definitely anyway. agree though with your assessment that she's definitely smarter than uh the mcu loki that we had so i'm very excited for her and love to see more of that stuff and not just relegate her to the loki show let's, let's bring her out put her in full force in the mcu uh, that would be a super fun dynamic to watch all right any final thoughts nutter butter is an underrated cookie i had that coming to me didn't i well, super excited for season two. And if I heard correctly through the rumors, I think season two is actually supposed to be starting sooner than we thought. Um, I, I'm not sure if there's a date or anything, but apparently it's already kind of in swing of writing and, and production. Uh, is it Wednesday? Because if it's if it's not Wednesday, I'm, I don't care. <laughs> it's always going to be Wednesdays. Wednesday, Loki was their highest streamed show, really? which is pretty much did pretty it beat much Mandalorian? The, it beat everything. Wow. All of their original programming. Of course wow. it did. Um, so pretty much solidified that Disney Plus will be moving forward with a Wednesday release schedule from now on for their big properties like this. I'm typing when you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> son of a bitch. All right. Well, uh, Wednesdays, we'll, we'll mark them on as soon as we have any news on the production of this and the release date. Be sure. Be sure to check out the podcast. Uh, we'll definitely let you know. I'm going to smack you in the in the face. You were talking. All right, nerds. Well, I want to... <laughs> All right, nerds, well, I want to hear what you have to say about Loki, so don't hesitate to hit us up in the comments or on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. You know where to find us. Find that kind of nerd. Thank you so much for making us your walk around your neighborhood or your drive to work, and we will see you on the next episode, which will be very soon, because we're going to go talk about Black Widow right now. Well, welcome to the club, because you are that kind of nerd. Was it something I said? Maybe. No, he has to do something for dinner. Oh, he's got to preheat a crock pot or something. Probably not a crock pot, but yeah. You're a crock pot. I mean, unless he's unless he's planning on eating at 4 a.m. It's probably not. <laughs> probably not heating up the crock pot. Honey, but I made buffalo chicken cheese. <laughs> Damn, it's, it's four in the morning. I know, but the Tostitos are still out but there. It's, it's ready that's now. Right. That's ready now. <laughs> I put the Valvita cheese in three hours ago. It's five <laughs> It wasn't ready before. <laughs> it wasn't ready before, but now it is. <laughs>